Hello welcome to IT Expert YouTube video series. Today we are going to talk about database terminology. What is database? Database meaning is defined as a data set or systematic collection of data. A database is a collection of data stored in a computer and structured to keep the data in a form and place that is easily accessible to users of the database who wish to exploit the uses of the database. Thus data management is easy when one understands. What is database since it supports manipulation of data and electronic storage? Data can be organized into files or into tables with columns, rows and index to make it easy to find and define a database. Since databases are used to manage retrieve and handle data in real time. Many sites on the World Wide Web are dynamic and use databases. Some of the popular databases use SQL queries where SQL means structured query language. SQL the DBMS database management system uses tuple relational calculus and relational algebra with a cylindrical structure to display the database image. Some of the popular versions used today are MySQL, Oracle, Sybase, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, Informix, SQL. What is DBMS Database Management System? A database management system DBMS is a software tool that enables users to manage a database easily. It allows users to access and interact with the underlying data in the database. These actions can range from simply querying data to defining database schemas that fundamentally affect the database structure. DBMS allow users to interact with a database securely and concurrently without interfering with each user and while maintaining data integrity. What is Entity Table? An entity is an object that exists. It does not have to do anything. It just has to exist. In database administration, an entity can be a single thing, person, place, or object. Data can be stored about such entities. A design tool that allows database administrators to view the relationships between several entities is called the Entity Relationship Diagram ERD. In database administration, only those things about which data will be captured or stored is considered an entity. If you are not going to capture data about something, there's no point in creating an entity in a database. If you are creating a database of your employees, examples of entities you may have include employees and health plan enrollment. What is Columns Attributes? Attribute. A real-world property of an entity type is called an attribute. This is the characteristics of an entity. It is represented by an oval or ellipse in ER diagram. Each attribute can take only a set of permitted values. This is called the domain of that attribute. For example, we define the role no of the student by a numeric value. So, the permitted values are only integers. And hence integer is the domain of attribute role number. Each attribute is represented by a separate column in a relational table. For example, the entity student has properties like name, address, role number, mobile number, age, date of birth, class, section, etc. So, when we make an ER diagram then name, address, role number, mobile number, age, date of birth, section and class are represented as the attributes of the entity type student. In the above example, we see that we have used various modified oval symbols to represent the ER diagram. Various symbols represent various types of the attribute. The text of one attribute role number is underlined, the other attribute email is written in double oval, etc. There are many types of attributes which are as follows. One simple attribute and composite attribute. Two single-valued attribute and multi-valued attribute. Three stored attribute and derived attribute. 4 Key Attribute and Non-Key Attribute What is Record? A record is a collection of items or data that is organized in a group of fields within a table that are related to a specific topic or theme. For example, police departments keep records of criminals and the crimes for which they were arrested and charged. These police records often contain other pertinent information, such as the date and time of arrest. Court dates associated with the criminal's case, and any fines or penalties that were imposed on the criminal. These such records are often stored within a large database, which often includes multiple tables of records. Records are often stored in spreadsheets, like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. In a spreadsheet, the rows generally represent individual records and the columns contain relevant information pertaining to each record. What is primary key? In the world of databases, 
the primary key of a relational table uniquely identifies each record in the table. Databases use keys to compare, sort, and store records, and to create relationships between records. Choosing the primary key in a database is one of the most important steps in the process. It can be a normal attribute that is guaranteed to be unique such, as social security number on a table with no more than one record per person. Or preferably it can be generated by the database management system such as a globally unique identifier, or GID, in Microsoft SQL Server. Primary keys may consist of a single attribute or multiple attributes in combination. Primary keys are the unique links to related information in other tables where the primary key is used. It must be entered when a record is created, and it should never be changed. Each table in the database has a column or two specifically for the primary key. Primary key example. Imagine you have a student's table that contains a record for each student at a university. The student's unique student ID number is a good choice for a primary key in the student's table. The student's first and last name are not good choices because there is always the chance that more than one student might have the same name. Other poor choices for primary keys include zip code, email address, and employer, all of which can change or represent many people. The identifier used as a primary key must be unique. Even social security numbers can change when the Social Security Administration reassigns a number to someone who has been affected by identity theft. Some people do not even have a social security number. However, because both of those cases are rare, social security numbers can be a good choice for a primary key. What is foreign key? A foreign key is the one that is used to link two tables together via the primary key. It means the columns of one table points to the primary key attribute of the other table. It further means that if any attribute is set as a primary key attribute will work in another table as a foreign key attribute but one should know that a foreign key has nothing to do with the primary key. Use of foreign key. The use of a foreign key is simply to link the attributes of two tables together with the help of a primary key attribute. Thus, it is used for creating and maintaining the relationship between the two relations. When you drop the foreign key, one needs to take care of the integrity of the tables which are connected via a foreign key. In case you make changes in one table and disturbs the integrity of both tables. It may display certain errors due to improper connectivity between the two tables. There are some actions that are linked with the actions taken by the foreign key table holder. 1. Cascade 2. Set Null 3. Set Default 4. Restrict 5. No Action 6. Triggers What is ERD Entity Relationship Diagram? Entity Relationship Diagram, also known as ERD ER diagram or ER model, is a type of structural diagram for use in database design. An ERD contains different symbols and connectors that visualize two important information the major entities within the system scope, and the interrelationships among these entities. And that is why it is called Entity Relationship Diagram ERD. When we talk about entities in ERD, very often we are referring to business objects such as people, roles for example student. Tangible business objects for example product, intangible business objects for example log, etc. Relationship is about how these entities relate to each other within the system. In a typical ER design, you can find symbols such as rounded rectangles. And connectors with different styles of their ends that depict the entities, their attributes, and interrelationships. When to draw ER diagrams. While ER models are mostly developed for designing relational databases in terms of concept visualization and in terms of physical database design, there are still other situations when ER diagrams can help. What is database constraints? Database constraints refer to the rules that a table's data columns must follow. These are used to restrict the kind of information that may be entered into a table. Types of constraints. One constraints that are not null. Null values cannot be inserted into a column because of not null requirements. Two distinctive limitations. For all rows in the table, unique constraints ensure that the values in a set of columns are unique and not null. In a unique constraint, the columns must be declared as not null. During updates to the columns of the unique constraint, the database manager utilizes a unique index to guarantee the key's uniqueness. Three the most important limitations. To establish associations between tables, you can utilize primary key and foreign key restrictions. 4. Check the limitations table. 
A check constraint also known as a table check constraint is a database rule that specifies the values that can be entered in one or more columns of each table row. A limited form of a search condition is used to provide check constraints. 5. Constraints on foreign keys referential. Foreign key constraints, also known as referential constraints or referential integrity constraints, allow needed table links to be created. 6. Constraints on information. An informative constraint is a type of constraint that the SQL compiler can apply to facilitate data access. The database manager does not impose informational constraints, and they are not utilized for extra data verification. Rather, they are employed to increase query efficiency. Now, coming to relational database constraints, it is mainly categorized into three major types. 1. Implicit constraints. Implicit constraints are restrictions that are applied in the data model. 2. Explicit constraints. Constraints that are imposed directly in the data model schemas by declaring them in the DDL data definition language. Schema-based restrictions are sometimes known as explicit constraints. 3. Semantic constraints. Constraints that cannot be immediately applied to the data model schemas. These are referred to as application-based or semantic limitations. What is database index? A database index is a special data structure that allows quick access to specific pieces of information without having to read all data stored in a particular table. They ensure database performance in transactional environments. Index types. There are different ways to classify indexes. We will review some of the most used. One clustered index is index organized tables. When we mention that data is not stored in a table in any particular way, we were referring to how many database engines work by default. Database engines allow data to be stored in an order defined by the user. This kind of table is referred to as a clustered index SQL server or an index organized table oracle. Two filtered indexes. Some database engines like SQL Server or PostgreSQL allow you to specify a filter condition for an index. This reduces the number of rows that are indexed, making the index smaller and quicker to access. Three index with include covering index. Some database engines like SQL Server allow users to specify and include clause. This lets values for additional columns be included besides the index key columns. We can consider an index with include like a reduced version of a clustered index. Since we store only some columns together with the index key, rather than the entire row. Including frequently used columns may reduce the need to access the actual table to find values for those columns, making queries even faster. 4. Bitmap index. Bitmap indexes use a block for each distinct value in a column and then set a bit for each row in the table. This bit indicates if the row matches the value of the block. 5. Function-Based Expression Index Some database engines like Oracle, DB2, Informix, or PostgreSQL allow users to create indexes on deterministic expressions, including system-provided or user-defined functions without having to create a calculated or computed column on the table. What are popular databases? Finally, according to DB Engine's ranking, as of March 2022, these are the top 10 database management systems. Oracle. MySQL. Microsoft SQL Server. PostgreSQL. MongoDB. Redis. IBM DB2. Elasticsearch. Microsoft Access. SQLite. What is OLAP versus OLTP? OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. It is used for analysis of database information from multiple database systems at one time such as sales analysis and forecasting, market research, budgeting and etc. Data Warehouse is the example of OLAP system. It is used for data analysis. It uses Data Warehouse. It manages all insert, update and delete transaction. Processing is little slow. Tables in OLAP database are not normalized. OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. It is used for maintaining the online transaction and record integrity in multiple access environments. OLTP is a system that manages very large number of short online transactions for example, ATM. It is used to manage very large number of online short transactions. It uses traditional DBMS. It is mainly used for data reading. In milliseconds. Tables in OLTP database are normalized. 
What is Data Warehouse? The Data Warehouse DWH is a repository where an organization electronically stores data by extracting it from operational systems and making it available for ad hoc queries and scheduled reporting. In contrast, the process of building a data warehouse entails designing a data model that can quickly generate insights. Data stored in the DWH is different from data found in the operational environment. It is organized so that relevant data is clustered together to facilitate day-to-day operations, analysis, and reporting. This helps determine the trends over time and allows users to create plans based on that information. Hence, reinforcing the importance of data warehouse use in businesses. Types of data warehouses. There are three main types of data warehouses. Each has its specific role in data management operations. One enterprise data warehouse. Enterprise Data Warehouse EDW serves as a central or main database to facilitate decision-making throughout the enterprise. Key benefits of having an EDW include access to cross-organizational information, the ability to run complex queries, and the enablement of enriched, far-sighted insights for data-driven decisions and early risk assessment. 2. ODS Operational Data Store In ODS, the DWH refreshes in real time. Therefore, Organizations often use it for routine enterprise activities, such as storing records of the employees. Business processes also use ODS as a source for providing data to the EDW. 3. Data Mart It is a subset of DWH that supports a particular department, region, or business unit. Consider this, you have multiple departments, including sales, marketing, product development, etc. Each department will have a central repository where it stores data. This repository is called a data mart. The EDW stores the data from the data mart in the ODS daily or weekly or as configured. The ODS acts as a staging area for data integration. It then sends the data to the EDW to store it and use for BI purposes. What is Data Dictionary? Data Dictionary consists of database metadata. It has records about objects in the database. What Data Dictionary consists of? Name of the tables in the database. Constraints of a table that is keys, relationships, etc. Columns of the tables that related to each other. Owner of the table. Last accessed information of the object. Last updated information of the object. Types of data dictionary. Here are the two types of data dictionary. One active data dictionary. The DBMS software manages the active data dictionary automatically. The modification is an automatic task and most are DBMS as Active Data Dictionary. It is also known as Integrated Data Dictionary. 2. Passive Data Dictionary. Managed by the users and is modified manually when the database structure change. Also known as Non-Integrated Data Dictionary. What are Database Advantage? 1. Better Data Transferring. Database management creates a place where users have an advantage of more and better managed data. Thus making it possible for end users to have a quick look and to respond fast to any changes made in their environment. 2. Better data security. The more accessible and usable the database, the more it is prone to security issues. As the number of users increases, the data transferring or data sharing rate also increases thus increasing the risk of data security. It is widely used in the corporate world where companies invest money, time, and effort in large amounts to ensure data is secure and is used properly. A database management system DBMS provides a better platform for data privacy and security policies thus, helping companies to improve data security. 3. Better Data Integration Due to the database management system we have an access to well-managed and synchronized form of data, thus it makes data handling very easy and gives an integrated view of how a particular organization is working, and also helps to keep a track of how one segment of the company affects another segment. 4. Minimize data inconsistency. Data inconsistency occurs between files when different versions of the same data appear in different places. If a database is properly designed then data inconsistency can be greatly reduced hence minimizing data inconsistency. 5. Faster data access. The database management system DBMS helps to produce quick answers to database queries thus making data access faster and more accurate. For example, to read or update the data. For example end users, when dealing with large amounts of sale data, will have enhanced access to the data, enabling a faster sales cycle. 6. Better decision making. 
due to DBMS now we have better managed data and improved data access. Because of which we can generate better quality information hence on this basis better decisions can be made. Better data quality improves accuracy, validity, and time it takes to read data. DBMS does not guarantee data quality, it provides a framework to make it easy to improve data quality. How to protect data There are some differences between database security and website security. Best practices for database security require physical security steps and sometimes even software solutions. Cyber criminals can use a wide range of attack vectors to penetrate your site, so it is also important to protect your site from them. If you are looking to host your own data, these steps can act as a basic database security plan to get you started. 1. Ensure that the physical databases are secure. You should make sure your servers are physically secure by adding surveillance cameras, locks, and staff security. To reduce the risk of malicious activities, all physical server access should be logged and only given to the appropriate people. If you are planning to use web servers, you will want to research the hosting company to ensure there are no red flags related to previous breaches or data loss. Two separate database servers. Storing your data on the same server as your website also exposes your data to different attack vectors that target your site. Your database server should be isolated from everything else in order to reduce these security risks. 3. Install a proxy server that provides HTTPS access. When a workstation requests a database server, a proxy server examines the request. In this server, also known as a database server firewall, unauthorized users are prevented from accessing the database. 4. Implement an encryption protocol. You should also encrypt sensitive user information when transferring or storing it. 5. Ensure your database is regularly backed up. Backing up your website is common practice, but you should also regularly back up your database. Thus, a malicious attack or data corruption cannot lead to the loss of sensitive information. 6. Update applications on a regular basis. Database security management software should only be used by trusted and verified vendors. And it should be kept updated and patches added when they are released. 7. Authenticate users strongly. You can also add an additional layer of security to your database if you implement multi-factor authentication. What is database views? A view can join information from several tables together, or we can say that views are useful for hiding unwanted information. For example, adding the enam field to the order information. Database view is a subset of the database sorted and displayed in a particular way. A database view displays one or more database records on the same page. A view can display some or all of the database fields. Views have filters to determine which records they show. Views can be sorted to control the record order and group to display records in related sets. Views have other options such as totals and subtotals. A query returns information from a table or set of tables that matches particular criteria. What is database stored procedure? Stored procedure in SQL Server a stored procedure is a group of one or more pre-compiled SQL statements into a logical unit. It is stored as an object inside the database server. It is a subroutine or a subprogram in the common computing language that has been created and stored in the database. Each procedure in SQL server always contains a name, parameter lists, and transact SQL statements. The SQL database server stores the stored procedures as named objects. We can invoke the procedures by using triggers, other procedures, and applications such as Java, Python, PHP, etc. It can support almost all relational database systems. SQL Server builds an execution plan when the stored procedure is called the first time and stores them in the cache memory. The plan is reused by SQL Server in subsequent executions of the stored procedure, allowing it to run quickly and efficiently. The following are the features of stored procedure in SQL Server. Reduce traffic. Stronger security. Reusable. Easy maintenance. Improved performance. What is NoSQL? NoSQL, not SQL or not only SQL is a generic term used for databases that do not depend on a relational model. The data does not need to have a strict schema nor the usual SQL table structure. Most commonly, the data is aggregated as key value pairs, JSON documents, graphs, or wide column tables. 
by using no SQL databases, you can store immense volumes of unstructured data as it comes in and structure it at a later point. As expected, this leads to much better throughput, read and write speeds, and allows you to scale out servers horizontally. Non-relational databases, when applied in the right use case environment, bring significant benefits in terms of performance and flexibility. However, not applying a schema at the data entry point also means it is more difficult to query no SQL databases, maintain data consistency, and establish relationships between data sets. What is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is used for storing and managing data in Relational Database Management System or DMS. It is a standard language for Relational Database System. It enables a user to create, read, update and delete relational databases and tables. All the RDBMS like MySQL, Informix, Oracle Mississippi Access and SQL Server use SQL as their standard database language. SQL allows users to query the database in a number of ways, using English-like statements. What is DDL? Data Definition Language DDL refers to the create, alter and drop statements. DDL or Data Definition Language actually consists of the SQL commands that can be used to define the database schema. DDL allows to add, modify, delete the logical structures which contain the data or which allow users to access. Maintain the data, databases, tables, keys, views. DDL is about metadata. What is DML? Data Manipulation Language DML refers to the insert, update and delete statements. DML allows to add, modify, delete data itself. What is difference between delete versus truncate versus drop? Delete. Delete command is a DML command. It removes rows from a table based on the condition specified in the WHERE clause. Being DML statement we can roll back changes made by delete command. Truncate. Truncate is a DDL command. It removes all the rows from the table and also frees the space held. It takes a lock on the table while delete command takes a lock on rows of the table. Drop. Drop is a DDL command. It removes the complete data along with the table structure unlike truncate command that removes only the rows. What is difference between commit versus rollback? Rollback are the two transactional statements that are used to do or undo the transactions. A transaction can have a sequence of queries, or it may have the update statements that modifies the database. The fundamental difference between commit and rollback lies in their working. If the transaction is successfully executed then, the commit statement permits the modification made by the transaction in the database to become permanent. On the other hand, if the transaction due to some reason does execute successfully then, the rollback statement undoes all the updates, right from the first statement of the current transaction. What is Aggregate Functions? SQL Aggregation Function is used to perform the calculations on multiple rows of a single column of a table. It returns a single value. It is also used to summarize the data. One Count Function Count Function is used to count the number of rows in a database table. It can work on both numeric and non-numeric data types. Count function uses the count that returns the count of all the rows in a specified table. Count considers duplicate and null. To sum function. Sum function is used to calculate the sum of all selected columns. It works on numeric fields only. 3 average function. The average function is used to calculate the average value of the numeric type. Average function returns the average of all non-null values. 4 max function. Max function is used to find the maximum value of a certain column. This function determines the largest value of all selected values of a column. 5 minutes function. Minute function is used to find the minimum value of a certain column. This function determines the smallest value of all selected values of a column. What are three types of relationships? Identifying database table relationships. One of the huge advantages of a relational database is that, once you have your data held in clearly defined compact tables, you can connect or relate the data held in different tables. There are three types of relationships between the data you are likely to encounter at this stage in the design one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. 
To be able to identify these relationships, you need to examine the data and have an understanding of what business rules apply to the data and tables. When analyzing table relationships, you need to look at the relationship from both sides. When creating table relationships you always work with two tables at a time. One table is called the primary or parent table and the other is the related or child table. What are joins in database? In DBMS, a join statement is mainly used to combine two tables based on a specified common field between them. If we talk in terms of relational algebra, it is the Cartesian product of two tables followed by the selection operation. Thus, we can execute the product and selection process on two tables using a single join statement. We can use either on or using clause in MySQL to apply predicates to the join queries. A join can be broadly divided into two types. One inner join. Two outer join. Inner join. Inner join is a join that can be used to return all the values that have matching values in both the tables. The inner join can be further divided into the following types. Equijoin. Equijoin is an inner join that uses the equivalence condition for fetching the values of two tables. Natural join. Natural join is an inner join that returns the values of the two tables on the basis of a common attribute that has the same name and domain. It does not use any comparison operator. It also removes the duplicate attribute from the results. Outer join. Outer join is a join that can be used to return the records in both the tables whether it has matching records in both the tables or not. The outer join can be further divided into three types. Left outer join. The left outer join is an outer join that returns all the values of the left table and the values of the right table that is matching values in the left table. If there is no matching result in the right table, it will return null values in that field. Any question? Any comment? Thank you for watching this video. We provide hands-on computer training with labs, homework, group projects, prepare you for the certification, provide real projects. Internship opportunities, support you in Resume, LinkedIn, staffing support, provide tech. References, in-person, online class, class retake options. And more. Call us at 847-350-9034 for your free career consultation meeting. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our video to get the notification of our latest video.